And even if you do win the fight, when judges are like, ah, you know what? He didn't dominate or he didn't wrestle as much as he typically does. Like they'll end up giving these other guys the round. And you gotta be careful with that. I'm talking about you, Derek Clear. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Tell the Tape. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, AKA Triple C. And on this episode of Tell the Tape, I'm going to be breaking down that try. I'm talking about the champion has his name, Charles Oliveira versus the one and only Gamrod. I mean, guys, this is this is a fight that I want to see as a competitor. Both these guys are in that division. And guess what? This man right here, Gamrod, just called him out. Oh, yeah, you want to fight? Why don't you fight me? And this episode wouldn't be possible without our sponsors. That's right. I'm talking about Lifted Trucks. You may be a short kid. You may be 5'4", of twisted steel and sexual. But guess what, guys? Out on the street, I'm about 12 feet damn tall. So you guys make sure to go to LiftedTrucks.com and get your lift on. Here we have it. Charles Oliveira. Woo! 45 fights. That's crazy. Is my math right over here, guys? I'm typically... Terrible speller, terrible with numbers, but 45 fights. I mean, who would have known this man has that many losses? But he's also been in the UFC and all the majority of his damn fights are all in the UFC. And again, against a very against a gamer in Gamron. 24, 2, and 1. I mean, that's 27 fights in comparison to 45. Like that's that's crazy. Both these guys are super experience 10 ko's for charles Oliveira to 21 submissions i mean you guys look at that to three decisions and now we have you know gamra eight ko's five submissions and 11 decisions i'll tell you what man sometimes people can kind of tend to frown upon this a little bit but these are the guys who are the most dangerous these are the guys, these are like the Marabs that don't necessarily finish you, but they just understand that threshold. And, you know, Gamrod is one of them. He understands where is it that he has to take his pace and he's able to win. A fight that really surprised me with Gamrod, I will say is, and I became a fan of him, when is when he fought Armin Sarukian. And how is it that he was losing that fight and all of a sudden, boom, he started, he pretty much took the fight, stole the three. I, I want to say he stole. He stole the fight in the middle of the fight, and he just it just showed that this dude is an actual winner. 5'10 to 5'10, 74 to 71 inch reach advantage. And the older and Charles Oliver. I tell you what, man, Charles must really love his family. Like I, I love my mom, but I wouldn't want to see her every day. But this dude, I admire that from Charles Oliver. But without further ado, man, the champion has his name, and his name is Charles Oliveira. His strikes, his clinch work, man. His clinch work, and what I mean by clinch work, he likes, he'll throw, he'll clinch you, he'll like to throw knees, he'll go for takedowns, and if you guys didn't know, he'll pull guard. And this is the stuff that makes a guy like Charles Oliveira very dangerous. His stamina. You know, the fact that, you know, watch that fight with Justin Gaethje. When, I, when I'm talking about stamina, I'm talking about his ability to actually take a hit, go through punishment, and, and, and continue the fight. His submissions. I mean, 62% of his wins come via submissions. I mean, can you guys believe that? 62% of his wins come via submissions. I mean, that's a grip, guys. I mean, talk about having a lot. I mean... 62%, like he's probably the greatest, you know, he is the greatest submission artist of all time. I wanna say he's up to like 20 submissions in the UFC, something crazy like that. Yeah, oh, there it is. 31 finishes, only three wins come by decision. 9% of his racial, that's absolutely nuts. This is a guy that can beat anybody because of that sense, because you know why? Because he's a risk taker. And when you risk more, you when you risk more, you win it all, but sometimes when you risk it all, you get to lose it all too. And I gotta do it. Charles, Oliver, Charles Oliveira's weaknesses, striking defense, you know? And particularly, I gotta nitpick guys. And again, guys, like I'm, I'm fair with everybody, dude, whether it's John Jones, who I just did a breakdown on, or, or myself. 
striking defense. Sometimes he'll get into that pocket. He'll get this close when he's so rangy and he's got, he's fast and like he'll literally be in a, he'll, he'll stay in the fight zone a little too much like he did with Islam and Islam was literally able to take him down, you know? And on top of that, because he's super confident with, with what he does and he's been, because he, he's got a crazy finishing rate, he does expose his chin. Stays in the pocket too much. Stays in the pocket too much. He'll bring the fight. His defense is a little suspect because he's in the line of fire. He's always looking to submit. It's almost like he's fell in love with winning bonuses. And I would too, man, if I had those, those damn abilities, quite honestly. But he's, he stays in the pocket a little too much. And that's the stuff that gets him in trouble. Whether it's Islam Makachev or Armin Saruk. I mean, guys, this is MMA. This isn't Muay Thai. This isn't shoot boxing. This is MMA. You will get taken down. That's a lot of his loss has come from him, you know, bringing the fight and 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 staying in that pocket a little too much. So you know, the last thing is coming off of a tough title loss. You know, he lost to the contender. I mean, what does that do to his career? I mean, how how's it? What's his head like? I mean, nobody wants to like even myself. Am I losing two in a row? It's like, man, I just think about going down the damn line and fighting all these guys. Like you start to like, hey, you know what, man? Just give me give me some money fights. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the reality. I mean, he, he, he said it. Give me Kamara Usman. Give me give me these fights where I could still stay big. You know, let me go for a BMF. Let me let me do what Max Holloway did. You know, being being at the top tier, but yet not getting a chance to fight for the title because I've had so many opportunities. But coming off that loss, man, that says a lot. And we'll see. We'll see how we'll see if Charles Oliveira can get back on that horse and reclaim that title once again. And now let's switch over to the one and only Mateos. Am I saying it right? Mateos Gamrat. His strength. His wrestling, man. And this is part of the reason why he doesn't have power in his hands or you don't see any knockouts because the majority of his attention is all based on taking you down and doing work. I mean, I saw him fight. Uh, I saw him fight live against Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner, is he's tricky, man. Jalen Turner has got... He's got the length, he's got the speed, he's got great striking, but this guy has the ability to use what? His damn wrestling. And on top of that, his damn gas tank. Guys that just use grappling and wrestling to be able to kind of take them to where they want to get to, typically have a high volume. I mean, their volume is so high, is because that's all they do is wrestle. And if you guys know, wrestling is a very tiring sport, and particularly when you fight, but when you just deal with that and you know that, and that's what makes this dude dangerous. He's never been KO, never been submission. I wish I could say that. I really would. I really wish I could say that. You know, getting dropped to the knees. I mean, oh, so terrible. I don't even want to, you know, I don't even want to remind myself, but that's to let you know there's a durability to him. And he's a diverse finisher. He's looking for those submissions from different angles to catch you and eventually put you away. Yeah. Gamrat's weaknesses. Lacks head movement. I mean, could could Gamrat do, he needs to kind of do a better job with entries. But you can tell like he'll get in a crouchy position and you can tell he's getting ready to load and shoot. But that's also gonna, that, that's, you know, that that's also, there's things up the middle and particularly that Charles Oliveira can do if he catches that. And, you know, it, it's tricky fighting guys like that. And then tactically, as you know, when he fought Benil Dariush, Benil Dariush knew that he was going to wrestle. And I just, I still don't feel like that was Gamra when he fought Benil Dariush. I really don't, man. I really feel like if, if, if Gamra was to kind of run that back, I think it would be a different fight. But either way, sometimes he relies too much on this. So as great of a weapon that, that that is, when you get other guys that know how to wrestle and that can defend you and they're good on bottom or on top, it changes the game. He struggles fighting backwards. If you, if you, if you put that pace on a guy like Gamra, who's, who's accustomed to catching his angles, moving, and then eventually going for takedowns, it's different. And because he's not a finisher, he leaves the fight in the judge's hands. 13 out of his 24 fights have gone to decision. I mean, what does that say, guys? Even though he's a better, 
competitor than he is a fighter. When when you go to decision a little too much, you just don't know. People get tired of you. I mean, even if you do win the fight, when judges are like, ah, you know what? He didn't dominate or he didn't wrestle as much as he typically does. Like they'll end up giving these other guys the, the round. And you gotta be careful with that. I'm talking about you, Derek Cleary. The punch stats. Strikes landed per minute. Because Charles Oliveira takes more chances. You know, he's he's he, he's out there to seek, kill, and destroy. Where in this, where in this essence, he's looking to he's looking to wrestle you. He's looking to control you. Strikes absorbed per minute. I'm talking about defense. And if you guys notice too, the guy that takes more chances typically is the guy that gets more hit. So for that reason, because this guy wrestled, his defense is actually better. Takedown accuracy. Damn. Wow. You, were you guys expecting this? I wasn't expecting this. I for sure thought, boom, this guy was going to get it. It's somewhat kind of even, but Charles Oliveira's wrestling is super underrated. Takedown defense. 55% too. God, Lee. 91%. He's got a better ratio than me. And I I feel the shame of that. When I came back, I should have never came back. Then I'd be at 100% because nobody took me down. Nobody nobody took me down prior to me retiring. That's what happens, guys. You know? You want to sleep in silk pajamas? Balao! Woo! Submission average. You got to go with Charles de Bronx. I mean, the guy that has the most submission attempts and the most submissions in UFC history, not just that, but the most submission attempts too. And that lets you know that he's coming from every angle, very diverse. But when I see this fight as a whole, and again, guys, just not biased. I'm not even, I just want to say that more like who is this actually going to be favored in this fight? Charles Oliveira is very witty, very dangerous with the strikes. But if I am Gamrat, I'm looking back at the fight with Islam Makachev with the wrestling. And I'm looking back at that fight with Armin Sarukin with the wrestling. And it's going to be a boring fight, but this is what he has to do. He has to take him down, which is better than, which, which I feel like his takedowns and his entries are probably better than both of them. Maybe, maybe second, maybe next to Islam. But either way, man, a guy like Gamrot is, is he's a gamer, man. It's going to be a boring fight. And I said it before, and I've had this conversation with Kamaru Usman. He has to make it boring in order to beat a very dangerous and a vicious fighter like Charles Oliveira. So for that reason, guys, I think the favorite in this fight, as much as I love Charles the Bronx, I like them both, man. I, I'm a fan of both of these fighters, but because he is a lot more basic, and he has great wrestling, number one. And number two, he also understands his submission game. And he trains at one of the best clubs in, uh, the best gym in, in the world in ATT. So he's going to get that feel in guys that move just like him. So for that reason, guys, I, I, I like Charles. But, you know, the favorite in this fight is more likely going to be Mateo's gum, right? The person that really has to make the adjustment in order for him to actually win. It is Charles de Bronx. Could he really, could he push that pace just as he did with Benil Darius and actually do the same thing and push this dude backwards? Could he do that? I mean, that's that's the plan. If I'm Charles Oliveira's coach, I'm telling him, hey, you know what? Bring the fight to him. If he struggles going backwards and things like that, then do the exact same thing you did to Benil Darius. And those are the chances that I get. Look for your takedown too. You have, you know, your ratio is uh, uh, 3%, 4% better. Your, your takedowns are, are, are so uh, underrated. I even, even when I talked to Gaethje, Gaethje said the exact same thing. He's like, hey, man, when he got to my legs and he penetrated, it was crazy, man. It was crazy to feel a guy that's not a non-wrestler to be able to pick me up the way he did, and he did what he did to Justin Gaethje. So, again, guys, you know, I got to, you know, can I put a, I don't know what I should, uh, uh, yeah, he's from Poland now. So, Poland. Uh, is there white in the middle? Yeah, right. Colors, right? No. 
right? Is that how the is that how the Polish flag is or no? No? But either way, guys, I, I like Charles. I'm a big fan of Charles, but he needs to make an adjustment against a guy like that. He needs, he's going to fight everybody the same. He's going to rustle you. He's going to look for that right timing to take you down, to control you, to hurt you up top, and maybe look for a submission. And this episode is brought to you by the one and only Lifted Trucks. You may be a 5'4", you may be 5'5", five five, but guess what, guys? I'm on the street, I'm about 12 feet damn tall. So if, you, if you're a short king like Triple C, you guys make sure to go to liftedtrucks.com and get your lift on. Triple C, till next time, I'm out! <laughs>